six. I love the ghostly backstage environments of London theatres. Backstage atmosphere soaked with actors' anxiety, anticipation, excitement and emotions from the past. All that dead air. The backstage area of the Theatre Royal Drury Lane next to Covent Garden is absolutely huge. I've heard stories of a backstage suicide and one particular nasty accident with a car supported with metal wires. I've been high up above the stage at Drury Lane on a narrow metal platform. Definitely not for you if you're scared of heights. A lack of concentration in the dark from this height will kill you instantly. I've heard that this theatre is the most haunted and oldest theatre in London. A clown called Joseph Grimaldi performed at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane and he had a fear of being buried alive. So he arranged to have his head severed from his body by his children when he died. His head has been actually seen by many people in this theatre. This old clown tends to return to help and encourage any nervous actors on stage. I would assume any actor would never return to a stage after a clown corpse shows up with kind intentions. Even Grimaldi's fenced grave can't stop him from walking and watching the living. 5. I used to live three minutes from this pub in Islington, London, the old Queen's Head. I didn't like the feeling I had when I was in this place. I loved the way it looked, but I was always more relaxed when I left and not because of the alcohol. And then I found out this pub is haunted, so that's what I must have picked up. A young girl haunts this place. She's known to be heard crying and slamming doors once a month, and there's also a woman who haunts this pub as well. The girl and the woman wear clothes from the Tudor period. A landlord from the past said he was on his own and made his way downstairs in darkness because some switch wasn't working or a light bulb had blown. And while he was making his way down, he felt somebody press up against him. The geezer ran like hell and had no idea what or who it was. 4. Greenwich Pedestrian Tunnel is one of my favourite places in London. Down here I've never seen any twisted witches, demon spiders or damaged spirits. But this is a suffocating location that will definitely enhance your nightmares. Apparently the tunnel actually moves with the tide above. When I walk along this underground foot tunnel, I think about all the bad things that will and have happened here since 1912. People have heard and seen ghosts down here and some people have had brutal fights and the horny adventurous have had sex down here. My imagination spills with creative ideas, claustrophobic feelings, and what would it really feel like to be trapped on your own in an old tunnel built under the River Thames? If you get a chance to visit this lonely long tunnel, you've a good chance of seeing me. And when you do see me with my beautiful red hair walking towards you in the distance, will you continue to walk towards me? Or turn back the way you came? And what will you do when you turn around? And I'm actually there as well in the distance already walking behind you. 3. In Hertfordshire there's a town called Tring. There's a natural history museum full of galleries of stuffed animals. Families with their kids visit during the day. I'm telling you now, if I visited here when I was a kid, some of the creatures on display would have totally messed with my head. I would have been really frightened. This is the weirdest and most fascinating museum I've ever visited. It's weird because it all feels stale and wrong and a bit old fashioned. I know it's wonderful for education, but glass displays full of dead stuffed animals has a very dark and sinister vibe about it. I feel angry and sad, but absolutely fascinated at the same time. 
I walk around this place wondering what really happened to these once beautiful creatures. But here's where the real horror tease is in this place. I would love to visit this museum on my own in the dead of night with all the lights switched off and I just explore this place with a torch. Then this museum will change from a family destination to possibly an absolutely terrifying and unforgettable solitary experience. Perhaps I need to open up my own horror museum displaying stuffed dead human bodies. 2. In London's West End there's a place that you must not visit. I'll tell you where it is just to tempt and tease you, but steer well clear. People go missing here, never found or heard again, especially tourists. It's a place you've actually walked past and have never known it exists until now. You'll know this location really well and will be surprised that you won't know about this alleyway. It's close to Trafalgar Square. Look carefully, can you see it? This is the narrowest alleyway in London. Only one brave person at a time can walk through it. Bridges Place. It's so claustrophobic, even the mentally strong will struggle. The spiritual and sensitive will pick up on the very bad things that happened here. Of course I know you can ignore my warning shot and attempt to walk through this bizarre, narrow London alleyway, but I'm telling you now, you'll only be able to walk just a few feet into it and then turn around to exit quickly, then, then I'll, I'll be standing, standing there blocking your way. One. Some locations are only scary at night. During the day, fear is resting, but there's a section of London where you'll actually feel nauseous, and when you experience it, you won't be able to run away from it. And after I tell you all about it, you'll be intrigued and want to go through it. But you need to prepare yourself, because if unprepared, your mental health will get damaged. In the summertime, this location is unbearable. The smell of sweat, the stale air, the invasion of personal space, the London Underground. There's a section of this huge maze of train tunnels that is so frightening. You'll wish I never told you about it. On the Metropolitan Line when you travel from Baker Street Tube Station to Finchley Road, you will hear whistling. The strange whistling sound you'll clearly hear is the whistling sound of the dead. Some died naturally, some were killed, and some committed suicide because they've had enough of living. All these spirits taking comfort together whistling to the deafening sound of the constant passing trains. When you hear them all in that chilling, shrieking choir, whatever you do, don't look out of the tube train window. Oh, 